February 6, 2016, the first time the world has ever seen a full robotics team consisting of just special needs students that created all their robots themselves with their own two hands. So last year, the team, uh, one of the students on the team, Yvonne Torres, had this idea. She had worked with the special needs kids uh, in the past and she thought it would be fun to bring them upstairs and have them join us with a build session. So we had uh, 8811 FTC kids sitting next to the Flash kids and within 30 minutes we'd blown through everything that we had thought that they could do and they were just going. So that's when we all sort of stepped back and realized that there was a lot more here than we really expected. We saw that the incredible things these kids can do that a lot of people thought they couldn't and we wanted to do more so we actually researched and saw that they had no STEM after high school. Their, basically their future was stay at home with their parents or just try to find something in art, something in that nature to do. But there was no math, science or a career path actually for them after high school. So that's where the idea started to come up with the robotics league for them. And then uh, this summer when we were talking about some outreach ideas, uh, the team came up with this idea to start an actual uh, robotics team for kids with special needs. And it's one of those ideas that as an adult you think to yourself, well that's been done or there's a reason why it's not being done and so, but then if you start researching you find that it's never been done. And that's when I started getting this chill. I was an entrepreneur for many years. I worked at Texas Instruments in corporate research, and I know when a good idea comes, and they come very rarely. And this is a truly a world-changing idea. And it just, right now, I can just feel it right here, and it's still here. It's been here for over a year, and it'll probably be this way for a long time. I Googled like crazy. So basically, I just searched up a random question like, where do, uh, special needs students go after high school. What is their future? Uh, what careers in STEM do special needs kids have? Um, is there anybody successful who is um, in any math, science, top job related subject or anything like that? And nothing came up. Nothing on Google popped up, Yahoo, Answer.com, nothing. Uh, books, nothing. Magazines, nothing. There was nothing. We wanted to teach these kids more and we wanted to see what they're capable of and I think they've blown all of our minds, you know, when they show us what they can do. I went in blind like everybody else. I thought that they couldn't do it at first and um, I wanted to say that, you know, I kind of took it easy on them just thinking because, oh, well, they're special needs, you know, let's take it a little easier on them but it's actually not like that. They can do hard stuff. And as I progress, as they progress, I progress to see that they can do it. So, you know, a little tougher and a little tougher, and they were able to accomplish a lot more than I ever thought. These special needs kids feel discouraged at times. And I think with this program, they feel inspired and they feel motivated and they feel like they can do something. And with the project this big, I think it's important to have somebody who cares for them and, you know, to have somebody who knows them and who actually shows genuine care for them. And I think that was me and I really enjoyed teaching them how to drive. And to see them learn how and their smiles on their faces and just how glad they were when they knew that they could do it was a big thing for me. When you think back on robotics, what was your favorite thing that we did? Driving and like, like uh, pick up the blocks and like put your car back in the space and stuff. It's kind of fun. You can can help your teammates out in case they need some struggles, and that's pretty much it. I feel like a happy meaning to me. Yeah. I can do this. I got this, and I did it. That's not. So the whole point of this is that it is similar to FTC because they do exactly what we did despite their conditions. They built their own robot just like we did. They drove it and in fact they picked up very nicely onto the game. Sometimes we feel nervous about going onto the field or sometimes we doubt our robot or sometimes we doubt our driving skills. They doubted themselves at some point and they still did it. One of the things that I found uh, that we did not anticipate 
was that we, we saw the project as primarily us helping the Flash kids achieve something in the way of STEM and building a robot and competing with it and, and, and growing from that experience. What we didn't fully appreciate until it began to happen was that we were also growing from that experience. I know myself, I've seen uh, kids with special needs in a different way now. Um, I'm certainly more knowledgeable and more comfortable with working with them, uh, which as a, as a teacher maybe was not true for me in the past. I saw little things between our students, between um, our FTC 8811 uh, kids and just little vignettes of little interactions, just little things that you began to see that it wasn't just us helping them, they were actually two kids talking to each other as peers. They saw each other as equals, different perhaps, but they were, they were, they were just two sides of a different coin. Well, at first we were like a bit uncomfortable with the whole thing since it was like really big and we didn't know how to handle it. But when we began to see how important it was, we came out of our comfort zones and we, we communicated with them and built this strong relationship with them. And that's how we fortified our path to what we are right now. I hope this project, I hope RoboFlash gets their own league and they can have other teams participate with them so it's not just RoboFlash being divided with four robots competing against each other. I hope someone can, any robotics team around here can, you know, bring their, the special ed kids in their school and say, yo, I trust you. These special need kids really have potential to bring something to the world and we're leading them into something that could potentially change their future. I think the future of, of this idea is very similar in many respects to Special Olympics. More flash teams, more teams from other communities uh, coming together in a tournament context very similar to the types of tournaments we see now with FIRST Robotics. There is a program that we can do, we can all do in our schools, it just takes those people to take that extra time to give that extra help to these kids that can do it. If someone can trust in you and someone can like, you know, have confidence in you and give you enough confidence to have confidence in yourself, you can go a long way. This is an unserved community of students who and young people who do not get STEM opportunities in their education or in the workforce. They don't get to do anything like this in their normal class day and they, they won't stop. They'll, they'll keep doing it as, until we all go home. Javi, um, what do you do in robotics? Uh, uh, uh. You build stuff? Huh. How? Show me with your hands. Uh, uh, uh. Like that? Huh. And then, um, how do you ride? How do you drive the robot? Uh, uh, With your hands? Uh, what do you? What does the robot have to do? Uh, uh, do you like being in robotics? Uh, do you think that it's helped you? Uh, but what do you like about robotics? Uh, 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 Building stuff? Uh, okay. What, what else do you like? Uh, you like it? Uh, okay. What else? Uh, uh, That's it. Uh, okay.